Ciao a tutti, buongiorno. We are waiting for our guest, Polina Shevchenko, to join us for this live. And as soon as she shows up here, I'm going to invite her because we are going to talk some, about something really important, which is uh, blockages and barriers when speaking another language. So let's wait for uh, Polina. Meanwhile, we have Marta. Hello. And here she is, Polina. Let's see. And we should be able to be together in a while. Let's wait a few seconds. And there she is. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Thank you for being here with me today. I'm so glad you, you accepted to be here and talk, uh, and talk with me on this Sunday. Oh, my God. Thank you for inviting. <laughs> I hope my internet will not <laughs> be that no worries. today. <laughs> so, so Polina, you? Could, yeah. could, you, could you tell us something about, about you, about uh, your work, uh, about what you do, and uh, which, who do you work with? Uh, because maybe there are people who don't know you, which is yeah. such a shame, and they should know about you. <laughs> so tell us something about what <laughs> you do. You. So my name is Polina, and uh, you can know me as Polyglot because I have this beautiful blog with a lot of beautiful people. Uh, I'm from Russia, so I was born there, and uh, I studied journalism in uh, Moscow State University. Then I moved to Paris, and I studied in Sorbonne University. I lived there for five years, and then I joined the European Solidarity Corps project, and now I'm volunteering in Lisbon. It's been almost a year I'm here unfortunately in the COVID situation and confinement, <laughs> but still positive. <laughs> have more time to, to work on my blog. And uh, yes, I work as a tutor for around eight years, I think now. I started when I was at university. And mostly I work with uh, Russian people, students who want to study languages, want to prepare for the exams, school exams, literature, and so on. And also with my a volunteering project. I work with an organization which is called Speak Social and uh, they help to integrate people to the community and like they have uh, their um, offices in different cities in different countries and uh, so they have this branch of activities where they provide uh, language groups uh, for people, for migrants who decided to, to move to another city and uh, these groups are led by um, bodies we call it bodies, not teachers. It's native speakers, so people who speak uh, this language like good, well enough to to share. And uh, this is like very, very nice opportunity. I teach a lot of people there. I share French, share English. Sometimes I even tried to teach Russian. And this is very nice because it's informal education. It's not a level of, uh, you know, like uh, teaching and uh, having this experience is quite amazing. And um, yeah, I also have experience in working in bilingual school in Paris. So for um, uh, children who have parents, like one parent or two parents, Russian speakers. And uh, so we were teaching them, helping them to speak, like not to forget about their culture. And um, yeah, so it was very nice. I have some, some experience in teaching. And so that's why, and I really like it. So that's why I think I decided to start this blog and uh, you know, share some experience and some ideas about how to make it easier, funnier, and, uh, you know. <laughs> totally. You, sounds like you had a pretty busy life and uh, quite a, a wide range of experiences, which is admirable, truly. So you, you have obviously tons of years of experience teaching uh, languages. Uh, I'm curious to know if you noticed any common blocks that people usually have when they begin to speak, depending on the level, of course. Yeah, I think one of the most problem, like biggest problems is that people don't have enough motivation, what we call motivation. Yeah, so they, they are quite motivated, mm -hmm. but they don't think for that. So they are quite like, procrastinating all the time. And I know what they're talking about because I'm always like that. Like no one is perfect. And so to force yourself to really study, to to take this time and to 
to find this time and to do some exercises and learn a language in general is very difficult. It's difficult to start and it takes a lot of yeah, strengths and uh, it takes a lot of, um, I think, uh, not really, I don't really like, I like the word motivation, but I think that uh, motivation is something that we all have. But uh, the actual like, steps to make something is, is more about habits. It's more about habits and uh, the necessity to learn something. And so this necessity normally like have people who move to another country or die, they are in the situation there, but they have to speak the language. Like when I moved to France, I had this and I had to study French because everyone was speaking French around me and I was studying at university in French. So that's why I learned it that fast. But for example, for language learners, it's very difficult to find time and motivation and uh, make this habit um, to learn language. Uh, the second, I think the, the second problem is um, when they don't know where to start. So if they don't have experience in learning several languages, if, if they don't have experience to tr structure their study, to plan their studies and to put goals, to set goals, mm -hmm. they, um, they don't know where to start and they're quite overwhelmed as you know, by the, the number of materials, my number of resources, because there are too many resources. I think it's very good and bad at the same time, because if we have just one, the good one, yes, we would follow it and it would be fine. But then you need to choose something, yes, for yourself. And this is difficult when you have too much choice, too, too many things to, to do. Then, yes, of course, they're afraid of speaking. And so like speaking for people normally means that they have to go meet a native speaker and just start the conversation. <laughs> just start a conversation as a native speaker without any mistakes, knowing all the vocabulary, understanding everything. I think that people feel like speaking with someone, it means that you need to be perfect, like perfect level, <laughs> everything should be perfect. And so this making mixed mistakes, um, it makes people demotivated, be demotivated. Uh, and also they quit quite often because they don't feel this confidence and um, they are not very I don't know like um, they, they don't they don't have fun when they speak so they feel stressed stressed and frustrated sometimes with their with their experience and the last thing that I wanted to say about the problems is that people want everything right now so they <laughs> are not very patient to really uh, wait for something and when people ask me like for how long should I study to have the to be fluent or you know to to be perfectly like fluent in the language like to feel amazing and to to know everything so that's the question that we don't have the answer because I think that most of native speakers don't feel that fluent in the language and the people who learn this language want to be <laughs> so I think that's the thing about like, I don't want to spend like three years on one language. I want to learn 10 languages in three years. Like, can I learn in three months? Like, can I learn in two weeks? And that's why a lot of people make a lot of money on uh, like promising, like being fluent in three months or like, you know, all the things. And people feel demotivated that they have to spend so much time on one language. And uh, yeah, so I think that these are the most important problems. Of course, there are more, but there's a problem that I usually hear from my followers and uh, I receive a lot of messages about it. <laughs> well, I totally agree with you on everything, especially the timing issue and uh, the perfection in this issue because there's a, a lot of, like, there are, there's a lot of, of beliefs that uh, we have to do it perfectly before we, we speak to someone, especially if we have to speak with a native speaker because, you know, performance, uh, we believe that uh, speaking is about performance, but it's not. So in talking about uh, this idea of perfectionism, how can someone, based on your experience and your knowledge, how can someone begin to speak in a way that is not so painful and that is uh, at the same time motivating to continue the experience and improve, of course? I think that there's something about like human nature in general. So we really want to be perfect at something to start doing it. And we need to take this example from French people who don't really, most of them, at least from my experience, they don't really have to be perfect to say that they're perfect. <laughs> so like we need to really reconstruct this mindset because we feel like we, we really concentrated on our failures. And I say it's like very often in my like, videos and posts that we're really concentrated on what is wrong with us, like the negative things, that we are not enough something. 
and we don't really feel we don't really see like how many things we do and actually tracking our achievements helps a lot like how many words did you learn i remember that i was preparing for the exams and i had the list of words on the cards because i learn normally with cards it's my it's my way to learn and um, when i just looked back and saw how many words i learned and i didn't even notice that i was like studying 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 and then I didn't, I was like, I don't know anything. Like I didn't learn anything. And then I just looked back and I understood that I learned like, I don't know, 100 words. And I was concentrated on the, the, the number of words that I have to learn and not on the number of words that I learned already. So I think that they, this is a difficult process of reconstructing our understanding of our achievements in general, not just in language learning, but in life. You know? <laughs> this is a very general issue that if you change your perception of your failures and achievements you will change its perception in all the you know all, all the sides of your life and especially in language learning so you will just understand that um, if you put small goals for yourself like not this goal like I want to be fluent but just small goals achievable things that you can achieve like during the week or two weeks or a month so you will feel better and because we, we know that we don't work as we want to work our emotions are not controllable in this sense so if we really feel like bad, we need to find the instruments to feel better and to motivate us daily, daily. And uh, goals, small goals help a lot with that. When we achieve something very small, but we feel like it's something, it's better than nothing. So I, I, I'm listening a lot of audiobooks about habits now, and uh, they um, always say that um, you really need to understand that one minute is better than zero even one minute, even 30 seconds, it's better than zero. So everything is better than zero. And just be concentrated on your achievements and not on the failures, not on the thing that you don't know, but on the thing that you know, something mm -hmm. like that. Agree, totally. And have you had an experience with the students who were particularly shy or insecure and you had to motivate them to speak at least a little bit to, to begin uh, continue the yeah, process? Yeah. Yes, um, I think that the most important part here is uh, a person you speak with. So when you start speaking, when you start learning, when you want to practice, you need to find a person who is like, um, for you, is a friendly face, you know, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so every time when I, when I uh, start learning, um, like, for example, with Portuguese, I, um, I have some experience with Spanish language I was learning by myself and before like French, of course. And so when I um, wanted to practice Portuguese, uh, I couldn't find a person to practice with because I was like, I tried to find tutors and so on, but I didn't feel comfortable to speak with them. And once I found the friend, now she's my friend, a Portuguese speaker, and uh, I, I feel comfortable to speak with her, even though I make mistakes, but I don't, I'm not afraid of making mistakes with her. And when I, uh, when I work with my students, uh, like when I teach languages and not even languages, anything, I really want people to consider me as their friend, like a helper, not a teacher, because um, mm -hmm. I want them to be, to be to be silly, you know, to to say something silly because people are afraid of making mistakes, and that's the most important problem because that really limits your mind. It limits a lot. And when I uh, teach social science, for example, I ask people to my students to think, like, give me your opinion. And they're afraid because this opinion can be wrong, but there's no wrong here. And that's the, the thing that I really think that when you work as a tutor or a teacher, you need to make this kind of relationship that a person, like your, your student, will not be afraid to be silly. Like to, if you make a joke, if you laugh at this person, it, this person will not feel that it's mean. It's like, it will, this person will laugh with you <laughs> because you're mm -hmm. your friends, you know, you're comfortable. And I think that's the, the key key factor here. When I speak about like also language exchanges, you can't just find a person to have this language exchange. You have to find a person um, you feel comfortable to have this language exchange. It cannot be just a random person because like if you feel like not comfortable and you are afraid of speaking, uh, in the end you will not be you will you will think that it will be the same with everyone. And um, like, you know, you, it will create some kind of block. And uh, I think it's very important psychological side here too. So if you feel like you are comfortable speaking with the person, you will speak even if you don't really feel like speaking in general. 
Sure. Not everyone is a good fit, of course. Mm -hmm. and that explains a lot of uh, when we, I, I don't know when you were a student in uh, maybe in secondary school or middle school, depending on where you studied, but it explains a lot of when, uh, the fear that we had when we had to speak in a foreign language in the classroom because we didn't feel that uh, atmosphere of friendliness and, uh, you know, that calm yeah. and relaxed atmosphere. There was a lot of tension back then. Actually, I have a very nice experience, very fun one. Um, I had this uh, kind of like, experiment. So, very basic knowledge, and then I started to teach like children, um, beginners. And um, I found this student who they lived in, they moved uh, to Spain, and she was afraid to speak in the classroom because she went to school with uh, Spanish speakers and she was afraid. And her mother asked me to help her with this block. And we started to study, you know, and sometimes I felt like she knew more than me sometimes, you know, like in some, because she was living in, the, in, in Spain. And um, I think in like three months of our classes, she really started to feel better. And her mother told me that, that she started to feel better just because um, I was like, you know, I just tried to be as friendly as I could with her and, uh, you know, make her make these mistakes, motivate her and uh, this kind of things. So really like this, this is like, I didn't help her a lot with language, but I helped her a lot to feel um, like confident in this. And I think that I would like to, to have the same. And I always look for people who can make me comfortable in my first steps in the language, because sure. then you, you can, you, you can practice with everyone, but first you need to start with some very, very friendly face and very small steps just to, because psychologically, there's also a lot of psychological things, not just language knowledge itself. So if we understand that uh, we, we should work with that, like, like from the psychological side first, not from the knowledge, you know? <laughs> so if, if, if we don't feel comfortable, just stop and analyze why, why you don't feel comfortable. And if you, solve your problem you can move further and if you just ignore this problem and start to push yourself you will have this negative experience one after another and in the end you will just i'm not made for portuguese or <laughs> i don't know something like that totally totally now that you mentioned the psychological aspect of uh, the learning uh, language learning process uh, going back to what you said at the beginning uh, you talked about motivation you said you like it and don't like it, depending on how the way how you look at uh, the word motivation. But you, I know, I know. Also, you talked about it in um, one of your blog posts, uh, and uh, I wanted to ask you. Um, sorry, in one of your videos, uh, my mistake. And I wanted to ask you if uh, you have any advice for people who lose motivation after maybe a few negative experiences like making repeated mistakes or meeting with someone rude or someone who doesn't understand them. How can we keep our motivation up in case these events occur? Yeah, I think that first of all, we need to always use the um, thing that we like and connect them with the language. For example, if we watch movies in uh, our native language, we can put subtitles or put the audio in, uh, in the target language and put subtitles or audio in our native language. And the, the thing is that a lot of people say that don't put subtitles in your mother tongue because you will read them. But I don't think that, I don't see the problem here. Okay, I will read, but I will hear anyway. Yes, I will not close my ears <laughs> at the same time. So I will hear my native language, like, you know, and I'll understand, I will understand the context. And actually, there is another thing that I was speaking in my podcast, and I will make another post about it, about brain adaptation to this native speaker's materials. So there's this rule, for me at least, there is this rule of 10 minutes. If I go to the movie, to the cinema, and I watch a movie, I understand nothing, but in 10 minutes, I will understand the, the plot. I will. Because like, I see the image, I see like people playing, yes. So... I, we should not be afraid of using this like movies. If we like movies, watch movies. Even if you don't understand, put the subtitles or try to understand, like try to really um, force yourself to watch it for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and you will understand the context and you will forget about the language in general because language is the instrument. It's not the, the goal of our like movie watching mm -hmm. process, you know? And if you like reading books, read books in, in the language. There are a lot of different... Uh, approaches how we can 
he, how we can read and um, like two books, for example, at the same time when you read in your mother tongue and together in the target language, you know, and you kind of, uh, I do it now because I like reading and I read in two languages because if I don't understand something in Portuguese, I look at the English version of the book and I understand. Mm -hmm. And so like I started to enjoy it, not from the first page, <laughs> but from the 10th to 20th page, I started to enjoy this Portuguese one. And um, there's so many things that you can combine. Like if you like cooking, uh, find a channel or a cooking channel in your target language, yes? Uh, or for example, if you like, I don't know, sports, try to find the, the um, like YouTube videos, um, fitness videos in your target language. So I think that's this combination of things that you like, but the language is a source and not the, the, the goal, you know? So <laughs> I don't know if I'm clear enough. <laughs> totally, totally. So like and when you cook that... language. I think it answers also the next question that I wanted to ask you because you also talked about the plateau level. And I know many people, maybe you had experience with the students coming to you and saying, hey, I feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over again. I don't know how, what to do to get out of this zone. What do you recommend apart uh, an immersion in what you truly enjoy in your target language? Yeah, the thing is that's not about my students, it's about me. <laughs> because I felt this plateau, uh, plateau in English and in French. And I think that the first step is to understand that you're having it, that you are, <laughs> you have this language plateau. Okay, I have this. Yes, I have this problem. What can I do about it? And we have these words. I wanted to tell you also that we have these words, like think. In, uh, in French, we have this um, chose, truc. In Italian, I think you have co cosa, right? <laughs> like that. So we just use it like, you know, this thing that we use to do that. And so like, it's enough for us to, <laughs> to express, like people understand us. So what do we need? We, we just, uh, you know, like accomplished our uh, communication task, right? We, we received information, we received the answer. So we don't need anything. And if you understand that you're on this language button, you want more, especially like if it's not enough for you, if you feel like you want to know more because if you don't want to you know it's like another question uh, if it's enough for you you know um and just yeah, take take a pause like yes if you're not in the conference or something just take a pause like can i can i please just look at look for this word in the dictionary i need to look for this word and just like look for this word in the dictionary and say okay this is like a screwdriver <laughs> so <laughs> now i'm like you know and just try there are a lot of apps also like you can put this word or just put it in the notes and then just go back to this sometimes or you will just remember it because you because it was in the context you know it's in the context and you use this word and that, that's the difference when you learn this language in your country and you, in, when you learn language in the um, target, the, tar the, the country where this target language is like used all the time. Because here, for example, I live in, in English. So like we, uh, we're in Portugal, but I live in English. So I have to learn a lot of words that I have to use, like, you know, in, in like daily life, because before I was learning academic vocabulary all the time and it doesn't help when you live in the country. <laughs> and the same with French, for example. I know so many words that I would never learn like if I just I was just learning, you know, the language. And so when you just um, consciously understand that it's not good for you to say thing, <laughs> that this word is, is will, will not run away, you know, like this word will be with you. But if you just put some efforts to once in a week, like check the grammar, just to check or you can subscribe to some channels you know YouTube channels or instagrams uh, where people like you know, your target language they explain some words so you will just have some new vocabulary or so on and just don't put a lot of pressure on yourself but uh, if you know that you want to know more you can just take several minutes per day or several minutes per week or per month and just to look at the grammar parts you know when when you see like ask your friends native speakers to correct you and try to understand it afterwards. So it's not something that you really have to work a lot on, but just if you're conscious about your problem and you want to solve it, like I'm trying to do this in French and in English now <laughs> a lot. So when I feel like I don't know the words, I will just look up, look at it, like uh, look up to it in the dictionary because, because otherwise I will always be in the same level. So there right. are all, all, a lot of things that we, uh, if we are in the um, in the atmosphere where people speak the the language all the time with your target language, you will learn anyway, right? But if you, for example, if you are like me in an atmosphere where I live with uh, not native speakers, so I also can learn some mistakes from them. You know, this is also very important. So we really need to 
uh, if we want to um, like improve our language, we need to um, take some time for that. Like uh, also watch movies, for example, or you know read books. So it's completely the same. It, uh, it's the same for beginners and for people who are like advanced or something. Uh, just I think that the most important part is to understand that you need more to stop using this words like thing <laughs> and and do the same exact thing that you did, but to put the, you know, like exercises that you like, like, yeah. I Instead think of was, thingy, <laughs> you would say <laughs> every now and then, a thingy, that thingy next to the other thingy. <laughs> Yeah, I also do it in Russian. It's like <laughs> same. <laughs> I do it in Italian yes. all the time. People get mad at me so much. We have yes. COSO, which stands for yeah. everything and everybody whom we cannot name. <laughs> and so people get so mad at me. Like, girl, come on, use a use a noun, use a proper name. Why do you have to say COSO? <laughs> yes, and this word exists in every, in all the languages. Like in in French, they have two words for that. I remember one is truc and no, the actually, other one actually was... they have three. They have chef, <gasps> they have truc, and they have machin. <laughs> oh <my> god! <laughs> <laughs> three words. <laughs> now one funny yeah, question. Use it a lot. <laughs> I have one funny question for you. Speaking of adding new words uh, or new expressions, new grammar rules, uh, uh, whatever we want to add to our, our vocabulary. Uh, what advice do you have for people who feel overwhelmed uh, by the amount of words uh, that they have to learn or the amount of expressions or uh, slang expressions? Yeah, I think that's, that's the only the problem when I was thinking about this question, that <laughs> the fact that you're overwhelmed, it's also a psychological problem, you know? So it means that you want everything like at the same point, like right now, I want to know all the words, all the vocabulary, all the grammar, right now, why I don't know that? And I think that you need to calm down <laughs> first <laughs> and say, okay, language learning, it's not something that will come like in super fast, you know, it's something that takes time. And, um, but it doesn't take time. Like you have to study every day, like grammar, 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 like no, get bored of it, demotivated and so on. But you have to understand that this is a process that you should enjoy. Enjoy the process. That's the key point. I think in this language learning, you don't have to learn one language all the time. You can add some languages if you are really bored about learning one language. But you have to understand that this is a process. And one time I heard, I started to try to study Chinese, <laughs> Mandarin. And uh, one girl said to me that if you want to study Mandarin, it will be like your, uh, your language for the rest of your life. You, know? <laughs> you cannot just learn Mandarin. You will just learn it like a whole life. It, it, it's not possible to learn like to, to be really fluent. You will never learn it like perfectly. That's because it's so difficult and you know, all these things. But I think it's true for every language. We cannot learn the language until the end. We cannot just, you know, just stay one day, wake up and say, oh, I finished learning Russian. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I know everything, I know everything. No, you cannot say that. You can just, um, you can just understand like what kind of level you want. Like if you want just to speak, if you want to speak about what kind of topics, like general topics and go from there. Like general topics is like, I can speak about the weather. I can like, you know, I'm okay in supermarkets. I can meet people. I can ask them questions. I can speak about myself. Or you can want to rec academic vocabulary. It's another thing. Like if you want to study in the, in the language or need, read some like research and, uh, you know, scientific things, it's another language, another vocabulary. And it's another vocabulary in your mother tongue too. So like even my students, my Russian students, when they read scientific texts for the first time, they don't understand anything, <laughs> nothing. It's like, I know some words, some pronouns, yes, but what, what is the sense of it? And so like, you understand that this is like, if you, if you meet the word, I don't know, screwdriver, <laughs> for example, <laughs> and you understand that like, it is it's something that you don't really use in your everyday life. Yes, so you're like, I don't know, student or something, you don't live in the country. So why don't you just, just take it this, don't learn this word now. So learn words that you really need for your um, like current goal. So if you don't want to read scientific journal, don't learn academic vocabulary for now. Once you will be like, uh, you will be like, okay, I know everything here. I want to go there. I want to know about um, whales and sharks. And I will learn this vocabulary about whales and sharks. So I think that there are also like this uh, list of topics and until B1, we have A1, A2, B1, 
And B1 level is a level when you have, when you can express like almost everything in your general, general life, B1. B2, it's academic, it starts from B2, C1, C2, it's academic language. And C2 is linguistic level. So something that you really like, <laughs> who, really, who really needs that? The, and native speakers cannot understand text in the linguistic level, some, some of them. They don't have this linguistic level. And um, so I think that B1 is the level that you need, but you need to go with base, step by step and enjoy. So overwhelming, <laughs> it's something that you, when you don't understand what you need. And first, I think that's why we, we put some goals, even if like we change it every day, right? these goals, we need to understand clearly what we need from the language right now. Mm -hmm. We have the question, I think. <laughs> okay, question. <laughs> okay, hello, which age group are you teaching? And uh, do you teach in the original language? I mean, teaching English in English or in the student's native language? Good question. Uh, yeah, I'm Russian students. My Russian students are from, I, I don't really like, I, I, I had this experience of working with children under 10, but oh. I enjoy more uh, teaching like uh, from 10 to like, uh, uh, I don't know, from 10, because like I can, I can have some kind of serious adult conversation with them. <laughs> I think I really like to be like in equal level kind of. And my students, Russian students are from, 12, I think, like 12, 13, 14. Um, I also have like 35 <laughs> like adults, like Russian also. And uh, with the speak, with this organization I'm volunteering at, um, there are people from tw 20 um, until, I don't know, like 50, something like that. So, and I teach my Russian students in Russian, but if it's like good level, I try to speak more in the target, target language. But with speak, we, I teach in English, or now we have this French conversational group, so mostly in French. Mm -hmm. But yeah, English or French. Awesome. Well, Polina, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been great having you, and thank you for your time and your generosity in sharing all this information with, uh, with me and with us. It's it's been great, really. Thank you very much for inviting me. No, thank you. It was a pleasure. And I really thank liked your you. questions. Can you Maybe. tell us where can As we find journalist. you? <laughs> As a journalist, I really liked your questions. You your, your website, your Instagram page, your YouTube channel. You have quite a you know, plethora of videos, which I'm, I'm super a fan of. So people really should know. <laughs> Yeah, I really like uh, social media in general. I'm like a res researcher in this uh, field. And uh, yes, like I think that the most uh, important channel for me is Miss Polyglot on Instagram. I also have Polyglot uh, on YouTube. I have Polyglot questions on podcasts. There are different platforms for podcasts like Apple Podcasts or Spotify Podcasts or some others. Um, yeah, and also I have TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> It's also polyglot, so <laughs> it's not very difficult, different and difficult to find me. But the most important problem for me now it's uh, Instagram. And recently, I started to speak about tolerance, and I think this topic will be one of the most important also on my platform because um, we unfortunately we face some kind of misunderstanding with uh, some <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, between some uh, subscribers, uh, followers, and I think that tolerance is something that we really need to to speak everywhere now, especially. Uh, when we speak about different cultures and different languages. Oh boy, yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again for uh, for being here with me today. And um, if you want thank to get you. in touch with uh, Polina, you know where to find her. It's Miss Polyglot on Instagram, uh, TikTok, YouTube, uh, her website. Uh, Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> and social thank you again. <laughs> thank you very much. Have a good day. And you. Bye. Bye.